below this line. May the best man win. Shake hands. Good luck. Wilson. I outlined some of the and wait for another opportunity. Nice left hook there from Poulton. Just sharp here in this first round. Still long, straight shots coming. Final minute of round one. Moved to Denmark from Zambia when he was very young, just four years old. Took up boxing not long after that, so he's been at this a long time. You know, Poulsen. He's a good amateur as well. Boxed internationally, mixed in some very good company. Cheeky little right hand there from Paulson after the referee, I think, had told them to stop boxing. There wasn't really anything on it. The pair of them just looking to land back lead hand revolving around each other in the center of the ring okay let's go to Matelo he's a Virgil hunter so into the second that first round a, a feeling out process nobody wanting to commit too much I think especially when you're boxing someone like Azim who's so fast you've really sort of got to try and acclim um, acclimatize to his speed get the timing of it you know, good timing can be speed, but certainly early doors until you've got the timing of that speed. It can be tricky, tricky water. So I think cagey start from Paulson, but, you know, he'll, he'll look to try and build on that now, I'd say. Doesn't want to start letting rounds slip away from him either. into the body there from Azim. When you see the pair of them side on, the way they're set up is pretty similar in terms of their hand position, the width of their stance. Neither one has quite got the distance yet. Yeah, Azim, he's finding his great right hand there from him. So you feel like he, it, it doesn't matter how warm you are in the change room, he still takes a round or two to find your range. And he's finding that range with the left to the body. He's landing it straight, and this round he started bringing it round to the side, which means his feet are slightly closer than they were for the straight left of the body. If you start landing that, then you know you're in range for that big right hand over the top. Paulson with the low left hand. He's got the sharp feet to drop him back, but his feet failed him earlier on there with Adam landing a right hand right on the bottom. There's that right hand again from Azim. He takes those feet in. He Landed fairly clean there. Poulter looking to try and fire back. Good jab into the pit of the stomach there from Azim. Poulter doing well in this round as well. He's I think he's realized that he can't match Azim for hand speed, so decided to punch with him. And sometimes that don't make sense, because if you punch with someone, the guy with a faster hand should land. But he's having a little bit more getting closer with that left hand when he tries to punch with Azim. Yeah, I think the other thing with Paulson, maybe he thinks, look, maybe this speed, this ridiculous sharpness of Azim, let that dwindle a little bit, make him work, try and find a pace that he's not comfortable at sustaining, and then I can come on a bit stronger in the second half. Right hand from Azim, maybe just brought a slight reaction there from Paulson. Five week count in Cuba, Paulson. It's their second fight together. Azim, of course, from the beginning with Shane McGuigan.
right hand from Azeem, but the gloves are up there for Paulson. Yeah, good, got a good guard, Paulson. So Azeem's got to really pry that defense open. He's got to use feints. He's got to mix it up. Can't be contradictable. You know, good body in the head with a jab. Mix up, vary the speed, vary the power, and also put some combinations together. single shots here Paulson is too cute for that yeah I think Azim needs to just touch Paulson a little bit more just land a little bit more lever on him before going in for that you know 100% power shot Paulson's still a little bit too tricky a little bit too slick at the moment off the one two there is he nice rhythm to it it was half blocked by Paulson but there's a decent flow to it there from Azeem yeah good variety from him now you know bring the left hook lead left hooks put that right hand around the side it's the way to break down someone with a tight guard is there's always an opening you just got to find it whether it comes down the side come through the middle you go head and body and all of a sudden when they start doubting their guard or they thought I have to punch their way out of those sort of situations they leave more openings to be taken advantage of is he just hurrying up those feet trying to get out to Paulson a little bit here I think towards the end of the third yeah, Paulson to his credit I don't think he's working hard here. I'm not saying he's winning the round, but he still looks quite calm and composed. He's, he's waiting for Azim to maybe make a mistake and try and land something decent on him. Well, after this, we've got Joshua Boazzi up against Dan Aziz, and Aziz, as always, will be taking inspiration from his great hero, marvellous Marvin Hagler. Well, he's obviously a Marvin Hagler fan. <laughs> So into the fourth, Azim in the black and white. Paulson undefeated, former holder of this title in the shimmering black and orange. I think Paulson knows this is, he's in for the long haul here. So it's about, you know, trying to win the rounds, but conserve energy at the same time. And you know, don't take too much early on. You know, the, the speed that Azim has, you know, you're, you're, you're the older fighter, you like the, that's going to leave him as the rounds go on. You know, and I get the timing of him, it'll be easier to counter at the minute. He's still blistering you fast, so he's got to keep his defences tight. Don't give too much away, and just take whatever Azim gives him. Azim himself, though, by that same token, is winning these rounds without letting off the handbrake too much either George and that I think is down to the schooling that he had last year the referee just warning him to keep that left hand up because he got all those rounds in last year they were long jobs Shane McGuigan kept him very much on the leash he's not feeling the need to go and win these rounds really really big he's just winning them no he is and he's waiting for his opening but in turn creating it with his stalking the guy in front of him with the sharp front foot and the sharp punches so he He's got a mature head on him, Adam Azim. He knows that he doesn't need to go for broke early on, that the opportunities will present themselves, but he's got to carve them out, and he's trying to carve them out with sharp feints, sharp left hands at the moment. Paulson, as I say, he's definitely an experienced, accomplished fighter, unbeaten. He's not really giving a lot of weight at the moment for Azim. Azim showing patience, landed a right hand there. Yeah, he's back in the rounds, and he will get more openings as the fight goes on. At the minute, Paulson's still sharp. You know, reflexes are still razor sharp, and he's keeping his hands high. He's edging forward. He's, you know, he's not really giving Azim much. Stepped in for the right hand there, Azim. He was slightly short. Paulson himself just trying to commit and close that distance so he can get into range to land himself. He, he hasn't felt much on the end of both gloves so far. Come 
handed the left hand there. Well, the time is drawing ever nearer. Good use of the lead left hand there from Azim. Up to the head then, stabbing down to the body. Catches Paulson with a left hand as Paulson came in there. He's maybe looking to commit a bit more here the Dane in round five because, as you've been mentioning, the rounds are just tending to slip by a little bit here and before he knows it, it'll be halfway and he'll more than likely, if it keeps going like this, be six rounds down. Yeah, and in a position where, you know, he needs a knockout or at the very least, knockdowns. So definitely, you know, want to start getting on the scoreboard now, back in a few rounds here, Paulson. So in that, as he takes more chances, that should give Azim the opening to, to land some shots cleanly. Yeah, Azim super sharp with his with his left hand, but I think well within his comfort zone at the moment, he's not being stretched, so you can't see him gassing out anytime soon. Referee warning him for a low blow. I thought that was it looked like a, a good shot there behind the elbow, maybe just slipped onto the waistband. Followed it up with another left hand there, as he that time more into the pit of the stomach. Also coming forward with a head a little bit low there. Left into the body from Paulson. Put out for the left hook, but Azim with that superior hand speed through his own left hand and landed first. Long right hand from Azim. He's had problems with his right shoulder before. It came out three times in his fight against Frank Pedijon. And if that's happened again here, then he's going to withdraw from the fight, essentially. And that is what has happened. Azim with the celebration. That is desperately unlucky for Paulson. You can see the shoulder has come out. It is dislocated. It's a very, very painful injury. As George throws to my left-hand side, drawn himself from the fight and retired with injury. Yeah, it's a shame because, you know, it was such, you know, it was a good fight. I mean, Azim was winning the rounds. He was boxing well, showing good maturity. He was patient. He knew that Paulson was there for the long haul. So he was back in the rounds, trying to break him down with the body shots. And I think Paulson was also hanging in there thinking, you know, Azim's got this speed, he's a younger guy, but he'll slow down and I'll come on in the second half. And, you know, unfortunately, we, we, we didn't get to see how that fight would have played out. You have to say Azim was definitely number five. Declaring your winner by knockout and still the European Super Lightweight Champion.